So you asked me how, how it was to uh, go to the IMF in 2008. And I must admit that, well, I had been tempted because I always had some uh, policy uh, interest. And uh, I was very lucky uh, when I was at MIT to have uh, two uh, professors, two thesis advisors, uh, Stan Fisher and Woody Dornbush. And both of them were basically going back and forth between doing Economic, macroeconomic theory um, and and, advise, and advising governments or central banks about what might uh, be right to do. And I had liked very much uh, the, the way they were thinking about the economy. They had taken me on some trips. Uh, I did a number of trips with uh, Rudy Dornbush uh, to Brussels at the time at which I found the commission was not doing a great job. Uh, but I had... At this stage in 2008, I had a regular academic career, uh, maybe with work more applied than the, the standard macroeconomist, but, you know, I was doing research. Um, Dominique Stolzkan, who was the head of the, of the IMF at the time, whom I actually didn't know, uh, convinced me to come. Uh, he was actually quite smart. He convinced my wife uh, that Washington would be a good place. And once he had convinced my wife, I didn't have much choice then to go. I went, uh, so I accepted in probably June of 2008, at the time at which, yes, there was a housing problem in the US, but there was no big financial crisis. And I actually spent most of the summer, I was still in, on vacation then, thinking that, well, that was a housing uh, uh, slump, but, you know, we had that before and was not going to be catastrophic. And Dominique at the other end of uh, of the Atlantic Ocean in, in at, at the IMF said, so, no, 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 it, it, it really looks bad. Uh, and I went to the IMF and I arrived two weeks before Lehman. And then Lehman came. And I must say that I was just not ready for it. Uh, in analytical terms, uh, I had not given a whole lot of thought about financial markets. Uh, I had a view of macro where interest rates and uh, asset prices were largely determined by present discounted value uh, uh, of, of, of future returns. And the plumbing is not something that I had looked at very much. So there was quite a bit of uh, fast uh, learning. Uh, I, I, I remember having to give my, my first uh, press conference uh, the day after Lehman. And basically, I spent the morning before the press conference, which was probably at 11, uh, on, on Google, uh, looking at you know what all the acronyms uh, that were uh, in the news actually meant. Uh, so that tells you something about the fact that I was I wasn't quite ready. But you know, it took a while. I think everybody was in the fog. I was probably a bit more in the fog than than most. Um, but within a, a, a couple of weeks, we had a sense of things. And within a couple of months, we started thinking analytically about it and thinking what, what could happen. It was obviously intellectually incredibly exciting. Uh, and, you know, it lasted uh, for about a year. And then there was the euro crisis, which was another uh, sad, but uh, but exci intellectually exciting event. And, I had fairly strong thoughts about what should and should not be done. Uh, for example, discussing the case of of Greece and whether they should get a pass on, on the debt they had. Very sharp uh, discussions with, with the commission and other creditors. And uh, basically, I had a, you know, I was in a way blessed. I mean, it's, again, uh, Bit ironic because the world was not doing great, but from an intellectual point of view, we cannot think of having had more a more interesting uh, environment to to work with. What I found when I went to the fund is that, in terms of human capital, this is an amazing place. Um, you know, when I, when I had an idea in the morning, which was kind of fuzzy and required some thinking and looking at facts. Basically, the afternoon or the day after, I would get, get three pages on it uh, written in a very clear way with the right data. I, I had a great time largely because the, the staff of the fund is, is really very good. And I think it's, a, you know, international institutions have problems, 
and you have a song, but from an organizational point of view and intellectual point of view, it's it's an amazing institution. So I, I really had a, a great time uh, throughout. I, I learned a lot. I was able to continue to do not, you know, the kind of research I would have done at MIT, but more applied research. And I think that on a number of topics, I made a difference to the view of the fund and maybe to, to, the, uh, to the debate. I mean, to take you know, the examples which are fairly well known. Um, I, I thought that in some cases, capital controls made a lot of sense. Mostly on the way in, I thought that the uh, high frequency inflows uh, were actually destructive. They were destructive on the way in because they were too big and the country was not able to absorb them. And they were destructive when for some reasons they decide to get out and they created a mess. So I was very much in favor of making it much harder for high frequency capital to go in, uh, say in the form of a toll tax, you pay 5% to go in. So if you intend to go out tomorrow, you don't go. Uh, that created very intense debate at the fund, which was still very much in the uh, no capital controls, let capital flows be what they are, it's good. Um, I think I won that fight. It was a tough fight. I think the fund has moved. I think many countries have moved. Uh, that was good. On fiscal policy, uh, the, when I went, it was still the old orthodoxy, which is uh, when there's trouble, you have a sharp fiscal consolidation to reassure markets. And I argued that, uh, yes, there was this effect, but there was a direct effect on demand, and you could create a recession, which would actually make things worse rather than better. And uh, this played out in the context of the euro crisis, uh, where I defended uh, my point of view. And, uh, the IMF reflected in part my view, and the Commission was much more on the orthodox side. Uh, again, intense discussions, but a lot of interesting research behind the scene. So, again, I had a great time. You, you asked me what, um, you know, how, how good a place it is for, for young economists, and I would say it's a great place. Uh, I think some young, I mean, in fact, you need a PhD in order to, to get in at uh, in the uh, uh, EP uh, entry level. Uh, I think some, some people, some students are really very good at macro theory. And if you're very good at macro theory, uh, then other things equal, you're probably better off being in academia. Uh, but academia, if you're not very good at that, is, is not very exciting. I think if you went to economics because you really wanted to make a difference in the world and think about issues where there could be improvements in policy, then the IMF is a marvelous place. You're not going to be happy all the time. And, uh, you know, you're likely to start by working on some small country and having to do a lot of Excel type work. Uh, but that's essential. And that's actually something I missed having come uh, to the fund at, at, at a fairly high level, I didn't go through that uh, experience, this country experience, and I regretted it because it is really hands-on. Uh, you see reality at, you know, at, the, at the ground level. And although it is, it is frustrating sometimes, it is incredibly useful. And then you move on. And the great, the great advantage of the IMF is you move on every three years to a different thing. Uh, you can spend time in research. You can't spend all your time uh, in research, because you really want people in research to know about the real world and people in the real world to know something about research. Um, but I would say I've advised a number of my uh, students to go to a fund, and in general, they have been happy. They're actually now in positions of, of power, uh, by very high levels of management. And uh, I think if you like economics, if you like the contact with reality, the desire to change policy, even you go, you know, you, you're a minister somewhere in some countries, obviously you can do that. But if you want to have a global view, a more global view, this is uh, an incredible place. I have only nice things to say. <laughs>